Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat interview, and I'm talking with Natalie. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you, and always great to talk to brand new MVPs weeks in. So thank you for joining me. For folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? So my name's Natalie Leners. I'm from the Netherlands. I work for a chemical company as a power platform developer. But I didn't actually start out in automation. So I have a change management IT, it was more of a reporting IT background. And before that, I was actually a hairdresser. So I went from hairdresser. It's, to it's IT. not often talked about is that that huge jump from yeah. hairdressing into technology. Oh, yeah. But it's. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I went from an all female education to a mostly male education. So mm -hmm. I became a hairdresser, did that for a year, got back issues, neck issues. So I stopped, I quit. And then I did IT school for about three years. Then I started working in IT. I did change management, IT things. And I gradually rolled on to doing SharePoint management, Power BI. I did a few info path forms. Mm -hmm. And then about three years ago, somebody gave me a call like, hey, there's a, there's a position open within the automation team. Are you interested? And I had no clue what it was. And I applied like, hey, I know Power BI. I mean, maybe maybe that's enough. And they hired me. So I had to learn on the job. And through that, I got to know the community, all of the online learning and everything that's out there. Then I started my own website and and lo and behold, became an MVP about two weeks ago. So that's kind of well, congratulations. Me, 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 me in a nutshell. Thank you. Well, you know, it's also, I, I love seeing, so a lot of MVPs that work for ISVs, so independent software companies uh, or, uh, or consulting companies, uh, it's always great to see MVPs that are out in industry. So actually doing the, not, not that the rest of us don't do the job, but you know, it's just, it's a little bit different. You're, you're in industry, you're out there with, with the, the, the company. So, uh, you know, how important is that role? Is that how, like, how big is it automation to have an automation team? How big is that team? Yeah. What do you guys kind yeah, of, we have, own? we have, we have quite a big, big automation team. And our focus is on, uh, replacing le legacy apps because we're, we're quite an older, older company. And it's also on enhancing the productivity and doing different automation. So we, we, we get requests after, after request, I'm currently working on six different projects. Hmm. So, cool. so it really depends on whatever comes in or we see a business need and whatever I learn on the job, I then convert into a blog post or in a session without company details, of course, but it's still every time I learn a new trick, I try and share that out to, uh, to everybody else. So in your in your company, I'm interested in this because from a, a you know, governance standpoint, I mean a problem for a lot of organizations where they have you know people uh, you know citizen developers across the organization could be developing solutions. Do they like centrally hand that off to you to own that, or do you still have individuals elsewhere in the company that create things and that mm -hmm. are then taken over and managed by your team? Yeah, so, so we have both. So we have applications that are created and managed by us. And we have citizen developers or, or people outside of our, our team that do applications and then we help and, and support them. So we have both. Oh, that's very cool. Well, it's, uh, yeah, it's a, that's a hot topic. I don't know if you, it's yet another thing to add to your list of things to go in and, and look at, but there's, you know, the, the formally, I don't know, what do they rename themselves? You formally, the patterns and practices uh, team that would look at kind of, you know, the, the governance topics around power platform. There's also right. the, uh, the maturity model efforts that are going on. Mm -hmm. Have you seen into yeah. those? So there's, there's a lot to kind of sink your teeth into. Well, talk to me about like, what was your path to becoming an MVP? Like, did, what, do you yeah, know another so, MVP or? Well, this past year, I was very, very lucky and fortunate to be going to the Power Platform Conference in Orlando, Florida. Mm -hmm. And when when I got there, I was just so amazed that at everybody that was there and that was sharing information, uh, share, sharing is caring and with all of the MVPs and Microsoft people that were there. And I met somebody there that became my mentor. 
and this person uh, helped me out and he was like, well, if you want to do a website, if you want to do sessions, go for it. So a month later in November, I started my own website, started sharing tips and tricks and tips that I had on the job. It's, it's okay to there, name drop, by yeah. the way, you can, you can say who it is. Is it a fellow MVP or is it somebody to it is, remain on? It is somebody within Microsoft okay. that, uh, that helped me out. And, um, and then from there, I started doing more. I did user group uh, things. I started doing demos. And then um, this person was like, hey, I want to nominate you for MVP. And that was in March or in February even. And I was like, no, I'm, I mean, I'm not ready. I mean, ready as, as you'll ever be, but it's more, I mean, I've, I've only been part of the community since September, October or November. So mm -hmm. I haven't really done that much in my opinion, but he's like, no, 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 you've done plenty. I, uh, I'm going to nominate you. And if it doesn't happen now, it will happen later on. And then two months later, I, uh, I got awarded MVP. That is great. Well, yeah, it, yeah. I always tell people too, it's like, look, it, it's, it is a bit of a black box of you know, the, the process and things around there. And they, they go back and they look at like your prior year of work, but I mean, to the, your Microsoft contact, it was six months, right? It, but it, the, the body of work, you know, is substantial. Mm -hmm. That doesn't matter amount of time. There's actually, there've been people, I know uh, somebody who left Microsoft in less than three months later, they, they were doing so much in the community outside of their job as a Microsoft mm -hmm. employee that it just, it was substantial and left Microsoft pretty much instantly became an MVP. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, so, I mean, it's, that's why I say it's a black box. Like it, 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 it's different for everybody and, and kind of the path to it. So it's always just interesting to kind of learn the path. And that again, is a, you don't have to be an expert on all things, but the sharing out loud, be, make, mm -hmm. making it very visible, the things that you're doing and your learning journey, I mean, that, that's what the community needs is more people sharing their journey. Yeah. And also, I mean, the word expert in itself, I mean, the technology is constantly changing. There are so many different cha changes and aspects to the technology. So yeah. So if somebody asks me, hey, are you an expert in this, this and that? And, and my answer is always, well, I know a thing or two, maybe I can help you. Because yeah. it's always, uh, there's always somebody smarter or uh, or there's or there's an, an, another change out there or different feature you haven't looked at yet. So I'm always kind of on the fence with the term expert. But yeah. Well so. Uh, and I will say that, you know, for MVPs, you have to be especially careful because like I'll hear a question to something. And the first thing I think is like, all right, I remember how it was. I know that there's been a lot developed. And then I try to think, is that public information yet? And I oh, have yeah. to go and search just to find out, okay, that is public. I can talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, so there, I mean, there's definitely things around SharePoint, around Viva, things that I loved it. I'm waiting uh, you know, mm -hmm. to, to be able to share this stuff when it becomes generally available. Um, but that's, yeah. So that's something that of course, uh, like I do a monthly, um, panel discussions on various topics. And I always give that warning and said, Hey, MVPs and RDs that are out there. I don't know if you're familiar with the RD program, the mm -hmm. regional directors, but, um, you know, be careful of, you know, your NDAs and, and, and be, be careful about what you're talking about. But um, well, let, let me ask another question. So like, what, what are you writing about talking about? Like, what are your passion features, technologies right now? So my initial passion was Power BI and reporting and sharing on that. But when I actually started doing my blog, I realized I couldn't think of any content for Power BI mm -hmm. to post. And I found myself uh, posting Power Automate things because I was working on Power Automate uh, for projects and got tips and tricks there mm -hmm. but um i'm i'm really passionate about helping other people so i volunteered or at least i offered to volunteer for all of the sharing is caring sessions mm -hmm. um i'm a mentor for somebody and i'm always open to doing a, a, a use group session or being on a panel somewhere to try and share the knowledge so it's not necessarily the technology that i'm focused on it's more on uh, explaining how something works in regular 
non-technical jargon. Yeah. So um, I have uh, my my parents are both non-technical. You could say a a technical, mm -hmm. and I'm used to explaining to them in regular language how something works, and that's something that I try and do in my blog posts and in my sessions as well, so that everybody from every single level can understand what I'm saying and learn from that. Yeah. And are you, uh, speaking of using natural language, are you starting to use any of the open AI, the chat GPT type capabilities to- A little and, bit, a little bit. Well, it's uh, what I had last week. I had a query that uh, that wasn't working in Power Automate and I asked chat, chat GPT like, hey, write me, write me a query that does this and this. And it gave me a non-existent PowerFX function. So- right. Yeah. It's well, it's not it's it's not really there yet. So for some things I'm I'm using it, but mostly I try and research on my own. Yeah. For now. Well, that's as uh, I think that's the well, I was going to say uh, you know good answer. It's like it was the only answer right now. It's like as a as a marketing person, it was uh, go in and do things. It's great for uh, you know for idea generation. It's great for uh, that kind of stuff. Like I, 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 like I used it where I was creating a chat bot and I used it to help create some of the syntax and it was correct. It worked it, it, you know, yeah. but it was a very simple uh, request. Um, but it's, uh, you really have to check the responses that you get in the, yeah. um, I, 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 like I hear stories. I know this is a little bit different, but I hear stories about people like that authored an entire book using chat GPT. I mean, like, you know, the time it would take to input everything to get some kind of mm -hmm. unique and, and oh, yeah. accurate result, it, it, it's almost not worth it, but yeah. yeah. No, it's something that I, I, I may have used chat GPT to come up with a session title, but beyond that, I don't go into the actual session slides or any of the information. Right. Yeah. So it's more getting a more creative input in doing a catchy, session title rather than yep. me trying to have it write my whole session for me right no it's great at, in summarizing the content that i've already written like i've where i'm writing uh like the, the the meta description for an article um and i need it you know a certain number of characters uh but uh yeah no anyway it's, it's just always interesting to, i know look i know it's going to change really rapidly uh there's a lot more that's coming and we'll see you know, I think a lot of people's perspectives will, will change once the co-pilot stuff starts yeah, going live, but we're all just kind of sitting together waiting. So, yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I remember 10 years ago, there were these chatbots. I think she was called Evie and oh, yeah. Evie back then, uh, I, I, I asked her a question and she gave me a response. Then I asked her something else. And then I, I really, uh, uh, got into the conversation that she was learning from other people. So she started talking about the force as in Star Wars. Hmm. I was like, wait a minute, you must have gotten gotten that input somewhere. So back then, even 10, 10, 10, 10 years ago, 10 or 15 years ago, even AI was already capable of learning. So I'm really excited to see what it can do in upcoming five years, 10 years. Yeah. Well, let me ask you the final question here about, I always like talking about the community stuff. So like, so how are you involved? What, what are you doing locally and regionally? Yeah, so locally I've been involved in only a few use group sessions. I've attended some community days. Uh, globally, I've been uh, doing a use group session, for example, for Orlando. I'm gonna be doing one next week, uh, which will be at my 1 a.m. till 3 a.m. And I'm doing another one that's at my 6 a.m. So with all of the time zones, but mm -hmm. yeah, I've uh, I've been involved with uh, with with user groups and panels. And lo locally, I did one in Belgium, in the Netherlands, and I went to Estonia for a conference. So mm -hmm. but yeah, that's only as I mentioned in this past uh, past past few months. So yeah. who knows what will well what will happen now. Well, with so much uh, opening back up, it's great to see for folks that aren't aware, like the communitydays.org um, has that calendar. There's more and more events that are popping up. Like we're planning our uh, event here in, in uh, just south of Salt Lake City, Utah um, for February. So there's one in Miami that's happening a couple of weeks in front of us. Uh, so next February, 
we're, we're so it'll be nice going to Miami and speaking an event and then coming home and we're doing, we always tie a ski day. We call it share ski, um, you know, to our event, but uh well, it, it's been great talking to you. Great getting to know you and hope to see you at one of these events. I may be in Vegas for that, that power platform event, which is mm -hmm. for folks that don't know too, that's the one that the last one that sold out with 4,000. I think that they're increasing the attendance from their expectations are eight to 10,000 for this one. So oh, it could be, I mean, it's, be a great it's, conference. It's, it's at the MGM Grand. So who right. knows how many people can, uh, can fit in there so yeah i am i'm really excited because last year i was i, I was a first time conference visiting person attendee had no clue what the what the community was and everything and just awestruck at at, uh, at at everybody and now this year i'll be speaking and and an mvp at the power platform conference so i am amazed at everything and l looking forward to uh to uh, giving back to the community will be great i uh, hope to uh to find you in the crowd down there if I'm able to attend that. So yeah, we're, we're figuring out if we're going to sponsor that or I might just be down there attending. So I drove down, it's only five hour drive. It's a beautiful drive, oh, but, but yeah. I may be down for that. But anyway, well, Natalie, thanks so much for your time. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Wow. Wow.